President of the United States, Barack Obama, lands in Jamaica on Wednesday evening for a day-and-a-half visit. During his stay on the island, the U.S. President will meet with Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller and heads of governments for CARICOM member countries. We now join our reporter, Tanika Thomas, who is on location at the Norman Manley International Airport, where President Obama is expected any moment now. Hi, Tanika. Hi, Candice. Good evening. Good evening. Now, what is currently happening at the airport? Okay, well, I can tell you that we're still at the Norman Manley International Airport, actually awaiting this historic moment when U.S. President Barack Obama touches down on Jamaican soil. Actually, we are at a holding area. The media actually is at a holding area designated on the tarmac. We're told that this is the area where persons with private jets and aircraft are expected to land. Now, what I can tell you is that President Obama is expected to land at gate 16 from his Air Force One aircraft, where his head of protocol will greet our head of protocol, that's our Jamaican head of protocol, Ambassador Eleanor Felix. Now, Ambassador Felix will then introduce President Obama to Jamaican Prime Minister, Mrs. Portia Simpson-Miller. Now, after those hesitations with dignitaries, he will be airlifted courtesy of the Jamaica Defense Force, JDF, to the up park camp. That's the area where the JDF is housed. That from that airlift to the JDF, he will be driven from JDF to the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in New Kingston, where we'll be staying for the night. So that's pretty much it when he gets on Jamaican soil. So we are still at the Norman Man International Airport awaiting President Obama. And you should be arriving in any time soon. Now, you would understand, and our viewers would understand, that it's a very secret, 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 I'm being told to step back a little. Some action is about to take place. You would understand that it's a very sensitive, sensitive travel arrangements that are in order. So you are, we are not being told, the media is not being told exactly the precise times, but we are now awaiting because the gates are already open, there are helicopters on standby for when President Obama disembarked. Now, I must tell you, Candice, that it's really a historic moment outside here. The media, media personnel are really excited for this rather momentous occasion. I can also tell you, though, that on our way getting to the Norman Man International Airport, there were tight security, tight security measures from you get from about the roundabout at the Harbor View that road leading to the Palisades, where the, the, where the airport is located, there were tight security measures, security of officials from the Jamaica Defense Force as well as the Jamaica Constabler for the JCF. So we are here on the tarmac, a holding area for the media. I don't know if you can hear the buzz of activity that's happening, but any minute now, President Obama, the President of the United States, touches down on Jamaican soil. Thanks, Tanika. U.S. President Barack Obama's visit to Jamaica preludes his attendance at the Sixth Summit of the Americas, which begins on Friday. Minister of Industry and Commerce in Jamaica, Anthony Hilton, speaking on scenes coverage in anticipation of the U.S. President's visit, says the visit is significant at this time as it presents an opportunity for bilateral talks with the president who is most identifiable to the Caribbean. This is more significant because um, it is a president in whom the population of Jamaica and the Caribbean um, identifies with, but more importantly, so, so, so there is a symbolic value in the, in, in the visit, but beyond symbol, there is the opportunity always to have substantive discussions and issues that affect the lives of our people, everyday lives of our, of our people. And the visit here is in two senses, as you've indicated. There's a bilateral meeting with the Jamaican government, and there's a regional meeting with the CARICOM heads of government. And so there is ample opportunity, I think, is you don't have to be eternal to make the points that you have to make and to raise the critical issues. So I think it's a, it's a welcome opportunity and a valuable opportunity. Also on the program was Minister of Foreign Affairs and Aviation of St. Kitts and Nevis, Mark Brantley. In outlining the significance of the U.S. President's visit, Mr. Brantley notes that he hopes this sets a precedence for visits by successive presidents to the Caribbean, which is a major border to the U.S. I think that it is 
tremendous for the region, tremendous for Jamaica. I think that it is symbolic that he has come to Jamaica, which of course over the years has been a leading uh, member of CARICOM and a member of the region. Uh, and uh, the fact that he is the first African American to assume the presidency of the United States with considerable support from Caribbean people in the diaspora, I think it's important that he has come. The symbolism of it for me is very significant. And I agree that whether it's an hour, a day, or a year before he demits office, it is important that he has come. And it would be my hope that we do not have to wait for another 20 years for a U.S. president to visit the region because we are a significant partner and an important border for the United States. And I believe that this visit ought, in my view, to augur well for future interactions at that level with the Caribbean. Now, is the U.S. president on a working visit or a state visit? That's one question the opposition Jamaica Labour Party, JLP and others want answers to. Information Minister Sandra Faulkner sought to clear the air at a Jamaica press briefing on Tuesday. More in this report from Tanika Thomas. The government is insisting that Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller did not make a mistake when she communicated the status of U.S. President Barack Obama's visit to Jamaica. Initially, Mrs. Simpson Miller told Parliament on March 17 that President Obama would be making a state visit. However, the U.S. Embassy in Kingston, Jamaica has confirmed that the president's trip is being referred to as a visit. So was Mrs. Simpson Miller inadequately briefed? The government spokesperson says no. When the Prime Minister made the announcement, the Prime Minister went off what the Prime Minister was told. The, we have referred to this as a visit by the President. The President will have bilateral meetings with the Prime Minister and he will also engage in the CARICOM meeting. I think the important thing is that the President is coming to Jamaica, he's visiting Jamaica, and I think that it is an honor for us to host him in Jamaica. So the Prime Minister got it wrong at the time? The Prime Minister did not get it wrong. She made a mistake? The Prime Minister did not make a mistake, and I think we should move on from trivialities. Meanwhile, Information Minister Sandra Faulkner says opposition leader Andrew Holness will not be excluded from diplomatic talks with the president. She says he will participate in at least one activity. There are going to be events, or at least one event that I know of, that the opposition leader will participate in. I will not say what it is now because I believe that the opposition leader has to be informed. So he hasn't yet been officially invited? I am home. not. No, I. Please. I, I have said I know there is at least one event that he will participate in. I believe that's the important answer that you wish to know. And just how much will it cost the government to host President Obama? Well, no figure is being branded about, but the government has been on an extensive drive to improve roadways and the aesthetics of major corridors in and around the corporate area. Meanwhile, some have argued that the government might be going overboard to impress President Obama. On Sunday, members of the Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation, KSAC, destroyed crab and corn vendors' stalls on Hero Circle. Some vendors claim they were only given short notice after operating at the vicinity for over 40 years. But the information minister says the move was not intended to be malicious. Well, I am sure that you would understand that when the president visits anywhere, and the security experts here could speak a little bit more to that, there is a bubble in which the president operates. And I am sure that you would understand that we would have to keep certain areas sterile. And I believe that there were discussions held with the particular vendors and that I am told that the vendors will be allowed back there after the visit is over. I think it's done purely for security purposes. President Obama will lay a wreath at the Cenotaph in National Heroes Park in honor of World War I and World War II veterans before departing the island on Thursday. Tanika Thomas reporting for Scene Caribbean News.